Utilizing our training guide and our PTC checklist, we're going to evaluate and inspect a fire main system, fire pumps, associated fire main piping, and a fire station and hose. Prior to conducting our inspection, we want to make sure we're wearing all of our appropriate safety gear. We'll include, we'll include our steel toe boots, hard hat, eye protection if required, flashlight gloves, and a four gas meter if we're entering spaces that require it. The other thing to pay attention once we're in the engine room or machinery space is to check for deck plates that are missing. Uh, anything where you might take a step backwards and fall into a bilge or trip over a valve. Uh, anything in your immediate area that you're going to be looking around. You're also going to make sure you're not near any rotating machinery or there's anything that can come, reach out and grab your clothes, grab your coveralls uh, and suck you into rotating machinery. So, Dependent on the platform, the different type of vessel you're on, depends how many fire pumps and if they need fire pumps at all. Today, we're going to look at one fixed fire pump, independently driven. They can be independent, meaning they have their own prime mover, whether it's a diesel engine or an electric motor, or they can be driven off of a main propulsion engine via a power takeoff, a PTO. Today, we're looking at a electric motor prime mover fire pump. You want to check your fire pump itself. When it's not running, make sure everything looks intact. Make sure your electrical connections look good. Make sure that it, when it energizes, it's not going to arc or spark or has, become a hazard to us at all. We're going to make sure all the piping on and around is intact with no obvious cracks, damage, any repairs that have been covered up. I like to start from the suction point so where it actually takes water from beneath the boat, whether through a sea chest or a direct connection, and check the, the valve at the hull or sea chest, work my way back up to the pump. As it comes through the pump, I'm going to follow it out through the discharge side, and it should head up into the fire main system itself. There will be a gauge with which you can verify the pump pressure, but we're also going to verify pump pressure up at the nozzle with a pitot tube. One important side note when you're looking at your gauges on your fire main system. The scale the gauge is in should be appropriate for the pressure that the system is at. This particular system is at 50 PSI, so I should expect to see a 0 to 100 within this, which means that my gauge will read right about in the middle. If I had a 0 to 300, I would only be reading within the first 10%, and it's very hard to tell whether or not that gauge is accurate or if it even operates, because the needle will barely move at all. This particular pump has an install gauge and has a remote sensor, pressure sensor for a sensor up in the wheelhouse. There's also a local fire pump start and dependent on whether it's required by the platform type or not, there will be a remote start typically at the operating station. If there is a remote start, that's where we'll energize the pump from. If not, we'll energize it locally. One thing that we're going to look at while the pump is both not running and then while it is in operation is the pump seal. So where the drive shaft from your prime mover enters into the pump, we want to make sure water isn't leaking out of it while it's not running. And while it is running, a very small amount of leakage is acceptable as long as it's not spraying everywhere. If the vessel is required to have a relief valve in their fire main system, it'll typically be down by the fire pump itself. It will recirculate either back to the discharge side or recirculate overboard. When we're doing the inspection, the way to verify that is to verify our pressure is set and the relief valve is set at the same pressure. While down here as well, it's important to note if there is a check valve or similar valves installed in the system, once the system's been run, the water will tend to sit in this piping. If the vessel doesn't operate the, or exercise the, the pump, on a routine basis, we can get a lot of sediment buildup and we'll have a lot of problems with pressure and maintaining pressure or even drawing pressure. Your fire main system can be tied into another system. This one happens to be tied into their bilge system as indicated by the black piping. The fire main system is red on this vessel and their bilge piping is black. Not required on all vessels. You may find it on some though. This is important to make sure that this valve is closed when you're testing your fire main system as this could also 
lead to a loss of pressure. If you're having problems getting pressure while testing your fire main system, make sure all of your valves are closed at all of your fire stations. If the fire main system is tied into the anchor wash system, make sure and verify that that is closed as well. These are common issues that will lead to a loss of pressure when testing your systems out. For vessels with more than one fire pump, they should be located in separate spaces. Easy way to verify this is to check their approved fire control pan on board. If not, if they have one, typically be in your engine room. It's important to note that one can be used for another system, say a general service system where they're providing seawater cooling to separate auxiliary systems in the engine room. If that's the case, the secondary pump shall be dedicated exclusively and ready for immediate use for the fire main system. While looking at your fire control plan, it's also handy to find and locate your international shore connection. Your international shore connection is applicable to those vessels that travel on an international route. The international shore connection allows the vessel and local fire departments throughout the world to connect hoses and piping so that they can provide water to a vessel. This is based off different flange sizes, different hose connections. International shore connection is a standard throughout the world. The international shore connection consists of a universal flange, a gasket, four bolts, four nuts, and eight washers. To summarize what we were talking about with fire mains, fire main systems, and fire pumps, we're going to use our PTC checklist, make sure we checked everything off. We talked about hazards, cautions, and PPE. We talked about number of pumps and locations, remote start if equipped, verifying pressure. We talked about relief valves if they're installed, no connections other than ones necessary verified that there's an international shore connection and also if there's any damage while we evaluated the piping and any previous repairs. If you have any questions while I've been going through this or if anything comes up that you're curious about, write them down so you can ask your local coach or VO. Have a good day.